Hey guys, it's your boy Dope Snare. Today I thought we'd take a look at uh, the studio monitors that I own. A um, bit of a review. I own the Mackie MR524s. Um, they are the first option in the lineup. Uh, there's three of them. 524s, 624s, 824s. Um, that obviously applies to 5 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch woofers. Um, they are affordable. Um, they make some, I think, a CR series, which is like multimedia speakers, which I don't recommend, but I see people using them all the time, and they get along fine with those, so this is a step up. And in my opinion, they're, they're awesome. I've owned a few pairs of monitors in my life. I uh, had uh, some top-of-the-line Alesis. Uh, they, they actually discontinued them within like five years I guess they kind of flopped but like they had like a DSP and and uh, an LSD strip on each and you could they're supposed to emulate like 10 different speakers so you just push the button and you change change you know to Genelix or Yamaha's or this or that all in one speaker and uh, it was kind of like I guess gimmicky I don't know how well it, it performed but uh they sounded good they were like very impressive they looked impressive and they sounded impressive but um, they were very bottom heavy and colored I would say they were too colored to mix on they're fun to make beats with and and listen to music but they weren't uh, I, I would say they weren't accurate at all so they're very flattering though but uh, anyways and then I ended up trading those with a friend for something smaller and more um, appropriate for a, a, an apartment studio or whatever so I had the M1 Actives from Elise's and th those were I didn't care for them, but they were also not at proper height like these are. Um, the leases were like on the desk down here, and it's like, oh, I was, you know. Plus, they weren't they they were really they weren't the greatest speakers, and they were placed improperly, so I didn't enjoy those at all, really. And my mixes just sucked with those. And anyways, fast forward uh, quite a bit of time, and I have these uh, I would say entry level to mid level Mackies. Um, I remember before YouTube and stuff, or maybe even YouTube was around, I'm not sure, but um, Mackie used to be like king of monitors, uh, and, and, and their mixers are popular too, but there's this HR series, HR 8224s or whatever, and uh, they were pretty much like, it was that or Genlick, I can't remember the Genlick model, but those are the top two I think at that time that you would see in home studios and in professional studios. And uh, so I always kind of like had that nostalgia factor, like, oh, I wish I could afford a pair of Mackies. And it's like, well, 2020 or 19 or whatever. It's like, well, I can now because now things have been coming down in price and you could get good stuff for for cheaper. So like, I wouldn't say these are equivalent to those. They're totally different, but these are really usable. Um, out of the three pairs of monitors that I've owned in my lifetime I'd say these Mackies are the best um, they are five inch woofers and they only go so low so it's good that I have these headphones which I've also reviewed maybe I'll link that in in the card or description or something but um, yeah I checked my my subs on the headphones there is subs in the the speakers but they only go I think on uh, the chart says 45 hertz or something like that and I would I would argue that maybe not so uh, Double check with the headphones in my scenario with the five inch woofers Assuming with a bigger woofer or the top of the line eight eight inch woofers You wouldn't need to check the subs in the headphones, but it's always good to check in the headphones That's a little tangent. I went off, but yeah I, I use them in conjunction and I sometimes forget to check in the headphones because for the most part the speakers to do do a good job um, I'm just at their website here uh, to remember some notes um, they have something called a logger mythic a logger mythic waveguide um, these aren't just like flat faces they're they're like they look like aerodynamic I'd call them uh, they're designed in a way uh, not to not only look visually appealing but I, apparently it sweetens the the sound spot this sound stage the, the stereo width and um, I guess there's so silk dome tweeters those are pretty standard um, in previous monitors I, I had Kevlar woofers these are uh, 
can't remember the material, but they're not Kevlar, but they're 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 good and they're they're punchy and and I find the these speakers to be um, accurate, pretty accurate for for the price. I would expect uh, crap to be honest, but uh, we're living in a day and age where you can get some pretty good equipment for on the low. You know, even the entry level stuff is is sounding pretty good these days. Um, there is a subwoofer that's optional, uh, the MRS-10 powered subwoofer. Um, if that's your thing, it, if you can house that, then that's something to consider. Um, they have controls at the back. Uh, you could connect XLR, quarter inch, or RCA, so all three, that's awesome. And they have a gain knob at the back and, and up until yesterday, I had it at Unity Game, like straight up the middle. But then the Lloyd Banks album came out yesterday, and I was like, oh, I gotta start listening to it. And I'm like, yeah, this is this is awesome. So I went instead of turning up over here on my sound card, I went around back, turned it up a notch on the back, and um, it was it was I was sleeping on that. I, I should have maybe bumped those up a little earlier in in time. But I enjoyed the album. Um, the kick drums were punching, and uh, they put out a good sound. Uh, as I'm on the website today, uh, I didn't realize that like there is a little bit more tweakability. Um, they have the level, but then they also have a high frequency filter, they call it. And I guess it's just like up 2B or down 2B, DB, or in the middle flat. And then over on the, on the left side, they have a, what is that, an acoustic space. <coughs> Excuse me. So I guess if you have a bright room or a dull room, you could niggle that control or leave it as is uh, I think mine is just like default all around and um, it looks like there's a okay yeah yeah you you put your acoustic space uh, they have different setups uh, I'm not going to go into it because I honestly haven't used it but like if you're up against the wall they have a setting for that if you're like halfway into the room and you have plenty of space back there they have a setting for that if you you're your speakers are way out wide they have a setting for that so um, it's a little complicated but not really it's straightforward um, I just like to keep things as is usually um, yeah so that's that's that and I would say um, I haven't heard my music like too much outside of my studio so when I it's very rare that I'm like at a friend's house and I get to hear it coming out of their home stereo or whatever but I have I have a couple times and it's it's always n neat to see how it translate. I don't drive, I cannot do the car test. So I have like, you know, my monitors, my headphones, and if I'm smart, I'll I'll do my my earbuds or my phone speaker. But um they say the car test is the ultimate, but I don't drive. Yada yada yada, no car test for me, so um yeah. I can't tell you how they translate out too far outside of my studio, to be honest. I mean, they sound good on the phone and the earbuds. You just want to make sure your snare's not too high or your hi-hats aren't too high because the earbuds, especially like, you know, $10, $20 earbuds, they're just freaking sharp, piercing high end already. So if you, you've got those too high in the mix, you, you're going to make someone's ears bleed. And, uh, and if your sub is too loud, you're going to blow someone's sub. So, like, kind of got to learn some fundamental mixing stuff before before we even talk about speakers and stuff. So anyways, um, that's pretty much that. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what to add. Uh, they, they look good. They sound good. I, I, I like them a lot. They're the best speakers I've ever had um, in terms of studio speakers. And uh, yeah, Mackie's a, Mackie's a pretty reputable, reputable company. And... Uh, you can, they're affordable. I don't know if they, they might, I think they do have the H series still, like uh, new, like MK2s or MK3s, which are like the step up from these even. And um, they're probably even better. But for, for my use, like I'm, I'm good. They're like 400 bucks for the pair. Pimping. All right. Take care. Peace.